Picking up right where we left off, we put the default gateway on, everything's beautiful there. We've got connectivity to router one. But before we do those telnet labs, let's create an SVI, a non-default SVI, and something here that I want to point out to you along the way. I want to give it the same IP address that I've given VLAN one. So first, I'm going to go to that interface. And again, if you just want to take an IP address off, shut an SVI down, just use the same commands you would on a physical interface. I did a no IP add and a shut. I didn't have to do the shutdown, but I did it anyway. And you can see the state goes to administratively down, remember that phrase, and then line protocol change state to down. So now let's go out to interface VLAN 10, and I've configured that, and hmm, that's an odd message. Interface VLAN 10 change state to down. What did I do? <laughs> uh, thing is, I haven't done anything except enter the command interface VLAN 10. That's it. Haven't put an IP address on it. Haven't opened it up. Haven't even done a show command yet to see if I need to open it. And I've gotten a message that says change state to down. I don't know how I could have done anything wrong because I haven't really done anything yet except create the SVI. So you know it had to be something in there, right? Let's go ahead and finish the config. and do a show interface VLAN 10. And it says down and down, so that's not good. We see hardware's Ethernet SVI, we expect to see that. The IP address is on the line right under that. But I've hardly configured anything, so how in the world can it be down? Well, let's use what a friend of mine calls the Microsoft solution. Um, shut it <laughs> and then reopen it. On occasion, resetting a port works. Actually, he calls the Microsoft solution when you reboot something and hope it works when it comes back up. But we're not going to do that here. You saw change state to administratively down, and then as a result of me doing a no shut, the latest message we've gotten is interface VLAN 10 change state to down. So let's do a show one more time. You can see right at the top there, down and down. Here's the rule about SVIs that you have to keep in mind. When you create an SVI for it to be up and up, you have to have a physical port on that same switch in that VLAN, and that port has to be up and up. Otherwise, your SVI is going to fail. Because did you notice that when I created the SVI for VLAN 10, that VLAN 10 itself was not dynamically created? Because if we put a port into a VLAN that doesn't exist yet, and we saw this earlier, what happens? The switch creates the VLAN. If you create an SVI for a VLAN that doesn't exist yet, the switch isn't doing squat for you. you got to do it all yourself. So what we will do here is I'll run Show CDP Neighbor to do a verify. I'm going to take that other port from Router 1, the one that's connected to local fast Ethernet 0 slash 4, and I'm going to put that in VLAN 10. And just for fun, before I do so, we see at the very top line that particular interface is up and up. So let's do this thing. Fast 0 slash 4. I'll go ahead and make it an access port while I'm here. So it belong to one VLAN and one VLAN only. And that will be VLAN 10. We got the message again, access VLAN does not exist, creating VLAN 10. So now the VLAN the SVI is going to represent exists, and now we do have a port in that particular VLAN that is up and up. So now let's run show interface VLAN 10. We seem to be getting somewhere because that top line now says VLAN 10 is up, line protocol is down. We know the first part of that message refers to the physical state of the interface. The physical problem was VLAN 10 didn't exist and there was no physical port in it. And you just noticed we got a message about line protocol on VLAN 10 change state to up. Here is the real world lesson that I want to share with you here. You've got that theory for an SVI to be up and up. It must represent a VLAN that exists and has a port in it that is up and up. Also notice that when you resolve that issue, the SVI physically came up, <clears throat> pardon me, almost immediately. But the line protocol took 15, 20 seconds and we're so used to you know, the physical interface coming up and the line protocol coming up one or two seconds later that you start thinking, hey, is something wrong? Something's not wrong, but just give it a little extra time there, 15 or 20 seconds, and you'll be fine. So now you know all about a non-default SVI as well, and you know a little bit about troubleshooting that, which is great stuff to know. Before the next lab, 
I will first off have a little something to clear my throat and secondly before we start the Telnet Labs, I will put the IP address back on Interface VLAN 1. We'll get rid of Interface VLAN 10, and we'll start doing some remote connections and hopefully some remote management. I'll see you there.